As far as Disney princess movies go, Mulan was arguably one of the best. It had fighting, romance, quirky characters, and a story about redemption and finding your place in the world. Despite how good it was, the original fairy tale was arguably much more interesting and empowering for women. But how can an ancient story top a Disney classic? Let's get down to business and explore the original Hua Mulan. What we do here is go back, 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 back. The first recorded version of Mulan emerged during the 4th century and from an educated guess, is supposed to be set during the Northern Way period. The original poem, from which all Mulan legends are said to have come from, was called The Ballad of Mulan, a 62-line poem that is surprisingly bare bones. When watching the movie, it seems like the whole story takes place over a few months, a year tops. But in the original, the entire thing is said to have taken place over more than 10 years. 62 lines for a whole decade's worth of story. It's like if someone tried to explain Lord of the Rings in 5 seconds. That's how quickly the original story moves. In fact, in the original poem, Mulan doesn't even have a family name. It wasn't until the 1500s that she was given the name Hua Mulan by famous Tang Dynasty playwright Xue Wei. Xue's play, titled The Female Mulan Joins the Army in Place of Her Father. <laughs> Just a great title by the way. I bet he spent a whole minute on that one. Anyway, his play quickly became popularly accepted as the true interpretation of the original poem. Disney, on the other hand, decided that Hua wasn't good enough and changed her name to Fa. Mulan in Chinese means magnolia, and Hua means flower. The flower magnolia is a beautiful name in Chinese and is infinitely better sounding than Fa magnolia. As Xue Wei's play is widely recognized as the true story of Milan, we will use parts of it to help fill out the story when comparing it to Disney's version. The Disney movie kicks off with Milan getting ready to meet her matchmaker, and demonstrates how Milan is a free-thinking, high-spirited girl, thus unable to conform to ancient Chinese society. The original, however, has Milan quietly weaving and contemplating the fact that her father has been conscripted into fighting a war. In both versions, Milan is worried that her father is too old and will probably die if he joins the army. Fa Milan cries about it until she finally decides to take his place. In the original, she doesn't waste any time. She buys a horse, a saddle, and goes off to join the army. Disney's Fa Milan shows her being accompanied by a small cast of hilarious sidekicks, including a lucky cricket, sassy horse, and the unforgettable Eddie Murphy as Donkey. I mean, Mushu. Mushu the dragon encourages Mulan to join the army so that he can retake his place as ancestral guardian. In the original, none of these characters exist. Mulan takes the center spotlight and is the only character that matters to the story. Another interesting move on Disney's part was to change Mulan's younger brother, who was too young to fight in the war, into a dog. And the name they chose for him? Little brother! Little... You are. Upon joining the army, Disney's Milan is shown to be clumsy and unable to fit in with the men. The original, however, shows Milan to be an experienced martial artist and adept with a variety of weapons. I honestly prefer the original version. Having her start out as a badass makes her much more of an empowering character, rather than the butterfingers with a heart of gold Disney first presents us with. Every great story needs a great villain, and unfortunately, both versions' evil characters are super two-dimensional. They only exist to give the main characters their triumphant moments. For Disney, her main villain was... Hang on, let me Google it. Shan Yu. Thank you, Disney Villains Wiki. Shan Yu and his army of invading Mongolians are an obvious nod to Genghis Khan, and really just an excuse to use the Great Wall of China as a set piece. In the original, the villain was called Leopard Skin, a rebel leader from the south who sought to overthrow the emperor. Both baddies have no backstory, and are swiftly dealt with by our Mulans. The movie actually takes longer to do this, as the play sees Mulan simply walk into the cave and arrest him. Of course, no epic tale would be complete without love. In the movie, the sexually confused Captain Li Shang serves as Mulan's main love interest, whereas in the original, her captain was called Ping. Ping is the name Mulan chose in the movie, and Ping Hua can be translated as flower pot, a derogative term for women who look good, but are ultimately useless. In the poem, Captain Ping was only there to help further the plot. There were no big cross-dressing reveals or close shapes like in the movie. Instead, after the war, Mulan, escorted by her fellow soldiers, returned home and simply changed back into women's clothing. The men didn't feel portrayed by the sudden twist, rather they were impressed and then continued on with their lives. For the original Mulan, her happily ever after moment came at the end of the story, when she was quickly married off by her parents to some random neighbor. And there you have it, the original story of Mulan. So, which one was better? Well, while the movie had a bunch of extra characters and additions that really helped flesh out the story, the original Hua Mulan was a straight up badass. There was no moping, no drama, just a female kung fu warrior dressed in drag serving a kingdom and family. For me, the no frills version works best. It tells a good tale without conforming to the tropes of modern storytelling. Both are stories of empowerment for women and encourage us all to follow the beat of our own drum. But in a fight, my money is on Hua Mulan any day.
Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more of my videos on Chinese history, why not check out this one on Chu Yuan, the suicidal poet who got a national holiday in his honor. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Wukong, and goodbye.